Hello, my name is Justin Charlton Jones. I'm one of the business coaches behind the No Limits community. Welcome to our portal, and I'm going to talk to you about how to drive sales and revenue growth for your business. Please take notes, but there is a detailed article about this topic on the website that you can read in your own time. So, how do you drive sales and revenue growth in your business? Well, before you start to think of tactics to grow your revenue, you need to identify a strong point of difference for your business. What sets it apart from all the other companies that provide the same services that you do? If you don't have a clearly defined and articulated unique selling proposition or USP, you will make the task of growing your revenue much more difficult. And there is a danger that you will end up having to compete on price. Your USP, your unique selling proposition, is the unique thing that you can offer that your competitors can't. It's your competitive edge. It's the reason why customers buy from you and you alone. If you don't have a USP, you're condemned to a struggle for survival. Um, that way lies hard work and very little reward. However, USPs can be difficult to find. And as soon as one company establishes a successful USP, you can bet your life that competitors will rush to copy it. But that doesn't alter the fact that it's absolutely essential for you to have some point of differentiation from your competitors if you're going to avoid simply competing on price. So here are some different techniques you can use to try and find your USP. Firstly, understand the characteristics that customers value. Brainstorm. What do customers value about your product or services or those of your competitors? Move beyond the basics that are common to all the suppliers in your industry and look at the criteria that customers use to decide which product or service to buy. As with all brainstorming, by involving knowledgeable people in the process, you'll improve the range of characteristics that you'll identify. So talk to your salespeople, talk to your customer service teams, Find out what feedback they get from their audiences, from their potential customers. But most importantly, talk to the customers themselves. Understand what they value, what they like about your business, what you do well, what they'd like you to do more of. Secondly, once you've identified the characteristics that customers value, rank yourself and your competitors by these criteria. Being as objective as you can, score yourself and each of your competitors out of 10 for each of these different characteristics. Where possible, base these scores on objective data. Where this isn't possible, try and see things from your customer's perspective and then make your best guess. So once you've identified the characteristics, once you've ranked yourself and your competitors on these characteristics, identify where you do well. So plot all of these on a graph, for example. This can help you to spot your different competitors' strengths and weaknesses. And from this, you can start to develop an easily communicated statement of your USP. And remember, when you identify your USP, make sure it's something that matters to potential customers. There's no point in being the, the best in the industry for something that customers don't care about. Finally, once you've created your USP, the final step is to make sure you can defend it because you can be sure that as soon as you've started to promote a USP, your competitors will do what they can to neutralize it. For example, if you've got the best website, they'll bring in a better web designer. If you've got a great new feature in your product, um, you can be pretty certain you'll see it in theirs next year. So once you've established a USP, you must defend it. That way, competitors will struggle to keep up. By the time they've improved, you've already moved on. Agility, the ability to move forward, is the only way to protect your, your business and your USP against competitive threats. And then once you've established your USP, make sure the market knows about it. It must be present in all your communication. It becomes the thing that you tell people about because that's the point that sets you apart from the others and which allows you to justify the prices that you charge. So, a little bit of a diversion there, but there is no point in trying to drive sales and revenue 
if your potential customers don't understand why they should be buying from you in the first place. So how to grow your revenue? Well, now you know what your message to your audience is, let's consider the ways to grow your revenue. And if any of you have had contact with Action Coach in the past, you may well have come across our five ways to grow your revenue and profit in your business. We're not going to look at profit today. We're just purely going to focus on revenue and sales. And there are only four ways in which you can grow the sales, the revenue in your business. These are the number of leads that you attract, the rate at which you convert those leads into customers, and then how frequently your customers buy from you and the average value of each purchase that they make. And there's a simple formula for this. The number of leads times the rate at which you convert, the conversion rate, gives you how many customers you have. The number of customers times the frequency that they, they buy from you times the average value of each purchase gives you your business's revenue, your turnover. At Action Coach, we have hundreds of strategies to help you to grow each of these areas of your business. But what I'm going to do is focus on some of the most commonly used ones for each of these areas. So the first point we were talking about was lead generation. How to make sure you have as many leads as possible coming into your business. First of all, always make sure you have at least five marketing strategies that you can employ at any one point in time because not all of them will generate leads for you all of the time. So you need to have at least five running in order to have a consistent flow of leads into your business. Once you've identified the five strategies, the secret of any marketing strategy is consistency. You have to keep doing it continuously. Secondly, review your online presence. Optimize your website for sales instead of clicks by determining which search terms and which aspects of your web design are actually bringing in sales. Consider how you can optimize your site or rewrite, rewrite your online copy to maximize those attributes. Make sure you have a clear call to action. Whatever marketing material you're using, whatever uh, it is, um, you must have a call to action on every touch point with your customers. Are you networking? then leave your business card with them and a link to schedule a call. Are you passing out brand pamphlets? Then is there a reason and a call to visit your website? Put your URL on all of your social media channels and your business listing. These are all very simple, but, but easy to overlook. I hope you're all using LinkedIn. If you're not, you should be. And try using LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Through the Sales Navigator to tool, you can identify pretty well anyone in any country, in any position, and in any size company. So if you're trying to, to create a prospect list of potential customers, um, it will allow you to do this. Um, and you can then use smart links, who viewed my profile, etc., to engage with people who show signs of interest in you and your services. Uh, another key aspect of lead generation is referral strategy. A lot of businesses encourage referrals, but they don't necessarily have a proper implemented strategy to create customer referrals, which is silly because customer referrals are is the best way of getting new customers, getting your own clients, your own customers to do the selling for you. Um, and it can really help to fuel your business growth. Um, you need to actively ask for referrals you need to ideally perhaps offer some form of incentive or reward, we call them critical non-essentials, to your customers to provide them. Because if you don't actively push in a non-pushy way for referrals, only a few of your customers will actually come back with them. They need to be reminded of the fact that you're looking for referrals and they need to understand that if they provide you with referrals, they will receive some form of appropriate reward. Point number six on lead generation is you must have a database. One of the best ways to connect with people and to increase your reach is by building a database and then communicating regularly 
with the people in that database, which keeps you and your business top of mind. But remember, don't spam them. Every piece of communication should answer the question, what's in it for me? Think about the recipient. Your communication should inform and educate them so that they're rewarded for the time they've spent reading it. Not thinking, oh my God, I just wasted five minutes of my life, I'm not gonna get back again. So news about new products, special offers, developments in the sector, something that informs and educates and makes it worth their while paying attention to your material. Point number seven, use social media. If you're not using social media, you should be doing. This is one of the fastest growing source of leads for businesses of every size around the world. You need to decide which media you're going to use and how often you're going to post. And ideally, you should be posting at least twice a week. Each post needs a memorable or eye-catching image because that's what stops people and makes them look at it. And when you're writing the content, which doesn't have to be very long to accompany the image, remember what's in it for me. So we've talked about ways in which we can generate more leads. Now let's think about the conversion rate. You've attracted these people to your business. They visited your website, perhaps. They've got in touch with you. How do you convert those leads into customers? Here are some of the most commonly used techniques. First of all, testimonials and reviews. How many of you buy something, particularly online, without reading a review? How many of you, once you've found out about a business or an individual, don't visit their website? Very few. And remember, when somebody visits your website, they're looking for a reason not to buy from you, which is why your websites need to be up to date. They need to be topical. Uh, they need to have interesting content. So using testimonials and reviews. Collect reviews and testimonials from your customers and then make them very easy to find. Put them on your website, put them on the homepage, ideally scrolling across it so that people can't possibly miss them. If you have a formal quotation process, put some of these, some of your, your, your best reviews and testimonials into the actual documents that you produce, the tenders that you send out. Um, put them into your marketing material because a positive review is the next best thing to a personal referral. And make sure you have a system for asking for reviews from all of your customers. Secondly, turn the quotes, the proposals, the tenders that you send out to your potential customers into sales tools. Create a smart template for your quotes, uh, for your tenders with images on them, testimonials from your clients. Include your company values in them. Remind them why they're approaching you and why you offer such good value for the money. And then thirdly, turn inquiries into conversations. Every time you speak to a prospective customer, have a checklist of questions to hand or in your head. Use these to demonstrate that you are the expert in your field and to identify their needs. If all you do when somebody rings up and asks for something is you provide them with a price, um, then you are just gonna end up competing on price because they'll go and ask the next person. By having a conversation, by engaging with them and proving that you're going to provide them with something that really fulfills their needs and which may in fact be different to the thing that they thought that they needed because they don't understand the product or the service as well as you do, you create engagement uh, and you're more likely to, to have a sale. So we've converted our customer or our prospect into a customer. Now we're gonna look at how to increase the number of purchases that they make from you. So remember your revenue is a function of how many customers you have, how many times they buy from you and how much they spend with you on average. So how can we increase the number of times that they buy from you? Well, add products or services. One way to increase the number of sales per customer is to offer more products that your customer needs. Um, so think about products that a customer would buy to use with your product or a service that your customer might need. What is it that they buy just before they buy from you? 
or what do they buy immediately after they bought from you? Can you add these things in? Um, so for example, let's just say that you specialize in making upmarket pens. Well, why not to offer notebooks and stationery too? Give them something to write in with the pen that they're about to buy from. A second way to increase the number of purchases is deliberately target your existing customers. A lot of people spend their time going out and looking for new customers and they neglect the customers they already have. So cultivate the relationships you have with your customers. Increasing your communication with them can remind them of your, uh, your, your products and services and you control the messages that they receive about you. So think about, we talked about creating a database earlier. You need a database, not just of your prospects, but of your existing customers. So reach out to them by email, text, whatever it may be to promote sales, inform them of new products. Um, <clears throat> and also remember that most of the, uh, the, the CRM systems that are available today allow you to review, for example, who's opened your emails, have they clicked on a link um, so that you can see how effective your communication is, is with your customers. And then a third option here is targeting lapsed customers. Provided you're collecting everybody's details when they start to buy from you, then you can target lapsed customers. And very often bringing back former customers takes less effort than bringing in new ones. So you need to have a marketing strategy for targeting your former customers so that you can say different things to them than you would say to your existing customers. You can perhaps appeal to them with specific incentives like a discount. Um, if they bring in outdated items and buy a replacement or upgrade. Um, former customers can also provide you with referrals or reviews that will bring in new customers. Uh, another point that people don't sometimes think about and when they're looking to increase the number of sales is reviewing delivery charges. Some customers may be willing to pay more for a product if the shipping and handling is free. Um, if you're selling online, you might consider ways to build shipping and handling costs into the overall cost of the item instead of including two line items in the price. If you deliver products locally, you may be able to try the same method. Uh, and then finally, create targeted incentives. If you have regular communication with your customers, you can use any occasion to build loyalty. Um, this could be around uh, special days of the year, it could be birthdays, it could be coupons for repeat purchases, but incentives that are targeted specifically to individuals. And now we're just going to think about how to increase the average sale value. So we've talked about how to create more leads, we've talked about how to then convert those leads into customers, we've just talked about how to get your customers to buy more frequently, the final thing that can grow your revenue is how do you increase the average value of each of those purchases that your customers are making? And here are some ideas. So try bundling products and services. Um, I'm sure in the supermarkets, you've all seen the buy one, get one free offer. Bundle products together. So it encourages your customers to buy more because they can save money by purchasing more than one item at once. Um, you can bundle internally, you can package items together and market them as a set, or you can offer a discount when customers buy multiple items together. You can upsell products or services. So create a specific plan to sell higher priced products so that you can transform a single sale into a more valuable transaction. Um, there is an old saying, your customers can't buy what they don't know about. So having displays, having informational material, which shows the different options that are available to people um, will help you to, to, to sell more product, but also having options. If you simply have one product at one price, then it's a yes or no decision. If you have two products by creating perhaps a slightly more expensive or upgraded option, um, the, and you can emphasize its benefits over the less expensive options, you've suddenly given the customer two choices. Probably you want them to buy the less expensive option. That's the standard one that you sell the majority of your products for, through. But you could also 
find that you start to sell the upgraded, more expensive ones where probably the margins are actually higher for you. Um, the third thing is to review your prices. Um, you can increase your revenue while maintaining the same number of sales if you review your prices. Um, you can sell more items by lowering your prices and taking market share away from your competitors, um, but that's a dangerous route to go down. But actually by raising your prices, if your brand is strong, if you've got a USP that, 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 people, um, that people believe in um, and customers value what you offer, raising your prices can be very effective. Um, if you ask us, we can tell you the, uh, the, the the formula for the rate at which you have to increase your prices before sales fall off by so much that you're not making more money than you were before you raised your price. So, and then finally, think about your sales incentives. So if you have salespeople, if you have staff who are responsible for, for interacting with customers, think about the incentive structure that you that you offer them, which could motivate them to make more sales. So um, giving them a new challenge, think about the commission that you offer, um, higher incentives, bonuses for achieving certain goals, et cetera, within a certain amount of time. All of these will help to drive the average sale value um, of your customers. So I hope that's given you lots of ideas for how to drive revenue growth that you can implement in your business. If you need any help with implementing any of these ideas, or if you'd like to talk to one of the No Limits business coaches about any aspect of your business, our contact details are on the portal. Thank you very much for listening.